Hello everybody, Durandal here. How you doing? Today I'm going to talk about some city builder games, some city simulation games, some of my favorites. Cities XL, Anno 2070, and SimCity 2013. Now, SimCity 2013 is pretty slick, as you can see. Slick, vibrant, almost a little cartoonish. Considering the history of the SimCity franchise, the best graphics they've ever had. Look at that. Gorgeous, isn't it? SimCity is the easiest to manipulate. With standard right click and mouse wheel commands to move about. I can zoom in, zoom out. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And then there's Anno 2070. A little fuzzy looking as you can see but very futuristic organic looking think future green utopia take a look as you can see it's a little fuzzy but it's still pretty cool looking you can see people walking around and stuff and as you can also see You're this guy of music. <laughs> you can get annoying after a while, but it's cool. But the thing is, though, if you want to get really close, you have to press this button, which is F1, and that gives you what they call a postcard view. However, this is just for looking. You can't do anything in this view except look. But it looks nice, doesn't it? Plus you get that tilt shift look, you know, a tilt shift like uh, the foreground is in focus and the background is out of focus and it gives you the impression that you're looking at, uh, you know, reality through, uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad too, man. It gives you that illusion that you're looking at reality. Now Cities XL, the buildings are hyper realistic. And the road graphics are just gorgeous. But it does suffer from one thing. It's hard to manipulate using the keys and the arrow keys and the commands to move around and stuff. I'm using the arrow keys now because it's easier than pushing the mouse and having it go all over the place. But look how gorgeous that looks. Look at that. The mountains are purple in the background. And in, and in the, uh, the map area. We'll talk about the map area in a minute. Well, let's see if I can see I'm just barely moving the mouse and it's whipping all over the place and there's two different views this is the, the cinematic view and then of course there's the top-down view that looks like this so that, and then you could, like I said, you could push the mouse to the edge of the screen and move around like that. In this view, you can zoom down. All the way down. Let's see if I can zoom back out now. See, now I'm, I'm selecting the mouse and it's, I guess it's just because my computer. But you can get quite close. Now let's see if I can move around. There we go. There we go. You can actually get down a street level. Something you cannot do in SimCity. At least you can't get this low. Well, something else you can do. Let's see. If I click on that, now I think I'm moving with this car. If I let go... Nope. Yeah, now I'm, I'm moving with the car. I clicked on that car. Now, another difference in Cities XL, and this is the big difference, is that, yes, it's a city simulation, but... You're not really simulating anything except the looks. The cars drive around, but it doesn't... And they say there's traffic jams, but you can't really see them. If you look down in, if you look in the city, you really can't see any traffic jams. And then the people that walk down the street, they're just walking down the street. It's not like they... Uh, you know, they're not counted as part of simulation. They're just for looks. Where is this? There was a guy sitting here. Okay, there's this nice lady walking by, see? I can click on her also and then become her and look and see what she's looking at. 
See now, I'm in, uh, see now, she's walking down the street. At a certain point, she'll disappear. And so, it's just for looks. Plus, they're a little cartoonish. You could even create an avatar and walk down the street yourself if you like. But like I said, they're not really part of the simulation. They're just for looks. They're just like the building. Hey, what's up, dude? How you doing? Cool little guy. Now, as you can see, roads are very simplistic. Just get from point A to point B. That's all it's about. The only criteria is everything must be connected. Because the cities are on small islands, that's about, that's about as far out as I can zoom, so I can't show the whole island, but I can show you another small island, like, say, that one. How about this one? There's an entire island right there that's not built up yet. Those things show ore deposits. So these are places where you could see these right here. These are places that you could stick um, uh, machines that can mine the ore and then transport it to the nearest uh, warehouse. So there's really only two types of roads. Regular ones and there are some or ornamental roads. Let's see, where's an ornamental road to show you? Uh, say, uh, oh, this, maybe this moment never. These right here are a bit more ornamental. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Yeah, you can't zoom in on it too much. See, I can't change. Here we go. That one's a bit more ornamental, that big one in the middle. Now, Cities Excel, in terms of roads, Cities City Excel is the most realistic and the most versatile. All kinds of roads. And if you include the mods that you can get, you can create the most realistic ro looking roads of any of the games. One way roads. Boilerplate, uh, boilerplate freeway over, clover leaves, overpasses. Now, you can create your own overpasses, but they don't look as good as, say, like, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. This is one of the boilerplate clover leaves that's in uh, Cities XL. Nice, huh? So, what you do is you create these roads, you, and then you just plop in the clover leaf, and uh, bam! You have a really nice looking road. So you have a roads that are, uh, you know, you have four lane highways, eight lane hi highways. You connect them up with your regular streets. And then you connect it up with this clover leaf. And they're beautiful. That's funny, I don't see anybody on this road right now. Where's all the cars on? So anyway, that's nice. But if you try to create it yourself, well, let's see. I think I have one over here. I tried really hard to make it look nice. But it's not, as you can see, it's not as nice as the one that you can, well, I'm going, I'm going to say, I'm going to uh, make a claim here. I'm going to say, well, I wasn't using, if you look at the terrain, it's a little difficult to put a clover leaf on. Hey, there's a nice pool there. Where am I at? Because of the terrain, I couldn't just put one of those ploppables down. They have to be on flat land. So in, or, so in order to hook up this set of roads to this area here and have it continue this way have it continue to the right and then back down that way towards the uh towards this clover leaf here i had to do this and then let me tell you something it wasn't easy and it looks like hell it looks pretty derpy but it got the job done let's see if i can I'm going to have to move it again. I'm going to have to go like this. There's a shortcut key for it somewhere. I don't know where it is. But as you can see, if you look at the terrain, it's quite difficult. Yeah, it's impossible to get a clover leaf in there. But the nice thing is, some of these are one-way roads, and so there aren't any traffic jams here. But as you can see, it looks kind of weird. Now, SimCity's roads... There's a wide variety of road types and road choices to determine whether or not you'll have traffic problems. And they figure in very much. And creating the right types of roads is crucial to having a successful city. 
adding the right mix of uh, population types along these roads, low, medium, and high well sims, is the key. This is the land value map. This is showing the mix of the low wealth zones, the medium wealth zones, and the high wealth zones. Low wealth is white. Medium wealth is slightly green. And high wealth is dark green. You change the wealth type by putting things like parks and theaters and things like that within an area. So for example, there are parks in this area, but they're low wealth parks. Let's take a look at the parks menu. All those dots represent parks that are put down there. For example, let's 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 turn off the land value map and take a look and see what we got here. See, there's there's a what what you would call a low wealth park right there. Plop this down and the area will still stay white, but it'll keep your residents happy. Now let's take a look at a medium wealth park. Ah, uh, here we go. This is kind of like a small park within the city, a tall tree row. Plop one of these down in a neighborhood. And the area surrounding it will become medium wealth. See how it's light green? Now let's take a look at high wealth. Plop one of these bad boys down. And you'll have a high wealth area. This here is a plaza. And plopping this down will create high wealth. When you do that, it changes the buildings around it. And so, these are medium wealth buildings. That's a low wealth building. These are low wealth buildings. And so on and so forth. Just like SimCity, there are, there are multiple population types. And you have to make sure you have housing for all of them. And the type of housing that you make determines... Uh, um, the population type that live there. So uh, in Cities Excel, you have unskilled workers, skilled workers, executives, and elites. And so I think this housing is uns. These are unskilled workers right here. And let's see. I think I cat them all in different. You know, I made different uh, enclaves. So these are unskilled workers over here. Unskilled, let's go out to this view and take a look at this. Now remember in SimCity, the, the population types are determined by uh, uh, the kind of parks and services that you put in. So if you build really nice parks, you know, uh, uh, high wealth people will move in. In this one, in this game, the housing type determines the population type so over in this area down here in the lower left these are skilled workers and so their housing looks like that so this is skilled worker I'd say medium density yeah this is skilled worker medium density and this is unskilled worker low density still rather nice Like I said, this is low. This is low density, unskilled workers. 
And then over here, this is medium density, low density skilled workers. That's low density? Oh, this is medium density. Medium density skilled workers. And let's see, where do I have high density? Well, obviously, let's take a look over. Just a second, it's saving. I know over here, by this golf course, see this nice golf course over here? Over here, I'm pretty sure I have some high wealth. Let's see. That's skilled workers. Here's elites. I wanted to show you what the executives look like. Elites. Fire station. Elites. Do I just have height? Here we go, executives. So these are, this is medium density executives. And you can see how European this looks. Although this could be in America. So this is medium density executive. And then I was showing you elites. I think the low density elites were over by the golf course over here. So this is low density elites. Yeah, low density elites. Like there's a golf course across the street, see there. Now see, I did all this. I mean, I could have put low density right here next to the uh, golf course, but, you know, and in SimCity, if I built a golf course, which they don't have, but if I built one, uh, they would have immediately put high density, uh, they would have put um, high wealth people in the neighborhood around that golf course. And you don't have that option in uh, Cities Excel. Now, Buildings, they're for the most part a little mundane looking. As you can see, there, there's not much variation to them. They're just in different shapes and they can't connect like any uh, like buildings in the other two games. They're, not, they're just not uh, those kind of buildings. Uh, they're all very utilitarian, like for example here. This is the city center. This is a, 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 an opera house and it's necessary for the people to be happy. This is a communications tower. This is also necessary to keep the people informed. Uh, you see what I mean? They're all very utilitarian looking. This is, uh, let's see, what is that? That is a, what is this? A sand extractor. So it's extracting sand out of the river. Uh, you need sand. It's one of the building blocks. So you need sand in order to make, uh, let's see, what is that? Is you need sand to make uh, silicon to make chips. That sort of thing. But you can't modify the buildings at all. Once you plop them down, that's pretty much it. And they're also tied to population type. So, just like some of the buildings in uh, Cities Excel, you can only build a certain building when, you ha when your population has gotten to a certain point and also a certain type of population. The buildings upgrade when the population upgrades, but that's it. More on that later. The main issue people complain about in SimCity is the city size. The city can only be built in a square block that's only, say, 20 or 30 blocks. Maybe 20, I don't know, 25. I don't know, you count them. But that's it. You see this square here? That's as big as you can make a city. Now, let's t we take a look at the region... You can see it's quite a large region here, but you can only build your city within these blocks. The software engine called Glassbox just simply can't handle, like say, having a city using this entire region. When you first start building a city, it looks kind of large, but you quickly see, let's take a look, Do I? is there one over here? No, there's not. Well, here's one. Let's take a look at this one. When you first start building a city, it looks really large. It looks like you have a lot of room. 
But as soon as you start building it out, you'll notice its limitations. There's only so much room to place city services. See what I mean? When you first start building it out, it looks quite large. Look at all this room. But once you get to a certain point, you will see that there simply isn't enough room for everything. Map size, I already showed you, the maps are rather small. All you can do is build on an island. That's as, that's as much as you can do. The entire world is over here in the lower left-hand corner. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll try to zoom in on that on uh, post-production. But as you can see, the islands are rather small. And so some of these islands that you can colonize, really you would only have production there. You wouldn't have actually have a population there. I would put ore extractors and I would put uh, buildings to, uh, 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 like say, maybe process it, pre-process it, uh, that sort of thing. And then ship it to the big island over here where all the people actually live. So the population is 4,300. That's not very much. And, and uh, I don't think I've... Uh, I'm not sure how much larger I can get. Probably not much. But I don't have all the population types. I have, uh, let's see, eco-employees. Oh, eco-workers. Yeah. Eco-workers, eco-employees. So there's eco-employees and eco-workers. Each one of them do different things. Let's try to put a couple of eco-worker buildings. Of goods on trading route. Negative. Yeah, let's put some more eco workers here. Puts one here. And one here. We are really now, each time you put one in, you see, I don't know if you saw those things rise, but let me try it again. Uh, there, there it goes. You see that? That's how much. That's how much materials it takes to build it. So let's stop doing that. Let's see. And you can build specialty things like, let's see, a quay wall, uh, different things you can build. Like I said, I'm not going to get deep, too deep into the mechanics. I'm just talking about comparisons between the three games. But because the islands are small, don't expect a large population like, you know, 100,000 or a million like you can in, say, Cities XL. You can get, like, you know, millions of people into one map. And in and, uh, SimCity, you could get... I've heard of people getting a million into one city, but that's ah, that's pretty crazy. I've gotten two or three hundred thousand into one city. This brings us to the map size of Cities XL. As you can see, it has the largest map area of all three games. Unlike SimCity, where you can build only medium-sized cities within square boundaries, and in Anno 2070, where you can only build on islands and underwater with the Ocean Expansion Pack. In Cities XL, you can build anywhere on an expansive map. Now this particular map, as you can see, is a coastline. There's all sorts of other, look at those purple mountains over there. There's all sorts of other maps that have more water or less water or that are in a desert or in a, or in a forest, that sort of thing. But as you can see, this is a coastal area. I'm using the mouse. <laughs> I'm using the keys to, to uh, to maneuver around because it's a little bit easier and a little bit more cinematic than trying to the jerky movements of uh, the mouse. So you can see it has a definite edge, but look at how large that map is. This map is prob probably about three times the size of a SimCity region, and you can use the entire area of the map. Um, this makes this kind of makes, you know, besides the fact of making large cities and suburbs and farms, it's, it's very satisfying being able to have this much room to work with. And quite a lot of work. This took weeks and months of work to get it to up to like this 2 million size. Now, SimCity, you can build an entire map in one or two sittings. But it would take quite a while to build one of these cities too. But, or for that matter, I'd like to mention that it takes quite a while to develop uh, uh, all the islands in Anno 2072, you're not going to do that in one sitting. But you can with 
you can with SimCity. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't know. Some people say, well, it's nice to be able to, you know, like, carry out a plan in one or two sittings. People just want to, you know, play the game and be over with. Other people, you know, like me, who want to be able to just, like, work on parts of it. Work part here, part there, part there, and get it just the way I want it. Keep in mind, though, that all three games share one goal, keeping the population happy. In Anno 2070, that means keeping them fed and entertained. As the game unfolds, that means finding the right balance of farms, fishing, and mining to obtain the raw resources you need to build the buildings necessary for your population groups to live. In Cities Excel, this means keeping up with the game's edicts on how much buildings and services you need to keep the city in balance. And in SimCity, this means building the right balance of services. School, police, fire, water, sewage, and education for the three population types residential, commercial, and industrial, to thrive. Now we come to the interface. In SimCity, the game I'm most familiar with, figuring out the right balance is easy because the interface is so information intensive. You can bring up an overlay with almost all the information that you need to quickly assess the city's status. You can bring up a population overlay. This tells you where uh, people are either at home, they're shoppers, the blue ones are shoppers. The uh, teal ones are workers, the purples are students, so on and so forth. It even shows you uh, where your tourists are. Water and sewage. Here's, here's power. This shows everything is getting power. The power plants are over here. Water. I think I showed you water already. Sewage. Those are the sewage pumping plants there. Police, fire, all that sort of thing. Uh, this one even tells you whether or not the people are happy. And it looks like everybody's happy here. It says it's bright green. That means they're happy. As it turns more towards red, that means they're not. So we're good here. Then there's the topic of balance. In Cities Excel, this means keeping up with the game's edicts on how much building and services you need to keep the city in balance. And so up in this area, you'll see like little announcements saying, it says, and right now, it says, more housing for unskilled workers. And there's already 2 million people in this town. Why do they need more housing? I don't know. You can't tell by looking at the map that they need more. There's no red marks or anything saying that, oh, we need more housing. It's nothing like that. It just kind of tells you. And now let's talk about the interface. All games share the same goal, keeping the population happy. This means, in Anno 2070, keeping the people fed and entertained. You have to have the right balance of food, farms, fishing, and mining to, the, to obtain the raw resources you need to build the things necessary to keep them happy. Uh, fishing. Let's see, where's fishing at? Are these guys fishing? These guys are fishing. See, there goes a the fishing boat now. This is a warehouse. So, yeah, this fishery, you have to have enough fishery. So, you see, there's some there, there's one there. I have one in almost every, you know, there's one there. They're, they're gathering fish. They store them in the warehouse. The warehouse has, in this case, uh, let's see, 238 tons of fish in the warehouse, okay? So what do you do with this fish? They feed the people, and you could trade with the other factions for uh, for them. So you could trade fish for something else. It depends. The one, I, one of the things I want to mention about Anno 20... What? Hand. This guy is like... He's a pain. Oh, he wants to give me 16 tons of sand. Okay, here. Thanks. Deliver the request. Now let's talk briefly about trading ship. in Sim City. Let's try doing that. Let me see. Uh, do I have any sand? Got a ship over here. Here is uh, the Merlin. I have plenty. Of, I do have plenty of sand. So he only needs 16 tons. And so. I just need to transfer 16 tons over there. Let's see. That is 10, 20. All he needs is 16. He's got 20 tons. So I'm going to go. I'm going to click over here. That's where he's at, right? Yeah, just come over here. Look at this thing. So I'm just now sending a trading ship. It's going to take a little while because he's way over. Where is he at?
There it is. You know, I have this thing turned around. There we go. 